Welcome to the Nerd Lore Podcast. We talk stories, theories, and lore. I'm one of your three hosts, Shiny Shoes. And I'm Crash Darling. And I'm Scandal. And today, we are going to talk about real people who did unreal or amazing things. Beheaded you on the spot! And I get the privilege of starting us off today. And I chose a young lady by the name of Cheng Shi. I'm, I'm almost positive I'm pronouncing it right. So she was born um, into poverty and grew up into her teens and early adulthood as a prostitute where she worked in a brothel. This was in China during the um, years 1775 to 1844. That was her lifespan. Well, growing up into that, you know, she had to hustle, make her way. Eventually, she marries a individual that is a renowned pirate. So she marries him. You know, and be they they become a thing, and she learns the ways of the pirates, basically. Well, he dies one day, and the generals, you know, are trying to figure out who's going to take control of his core of pirates. And she steps up, and she's like, no, these are mine now. But also, you guys are also mine now. So she becomes the queen of the pirates... And begins to rule with a amazing pirate code, which she created the pirate code. And rules the seas with these pirates for many, many years. Y yeah, scandal. Uh, so was there pushback from, uh, like, did she have to, she have to whack a few to uh, be like, I'm the shit, I'm for real right now? So you, she was a pretty, she's a pretty good talker. Whack. Not that way, and we'll uh, talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, there was pushback, but she commanded one of the largest crew, and she had, so sometimes all it takes a little ambition, and she had the ambition to band these crews together. So by the, by the time she got them together, she controlled a crew of about sixty to 80,000 pirates. Men, women, and children. Um... She had around 15,000 to 18,000 ships. And she is known as the most successful pirate in history. Um, Where is she from? She is from, this is China? Yeah, China. China, China right, right, right. Okay. Hmm. So what she began to do is she began to levy tariffs on towns. And she became so powerful that she actually started becoming her own military force. So the government continued to send ships and naval blockades to try to take down this pirate queen. She, she kept taking more stuff. She won every battle and sent them all running. They even hired naval forces from around the world to come and try to defeat her and take back control of their seas. Eventually, she was so successful, they just gave up. So she had a code of uh, pirate laws because, you know, not she didn't want to be seen as a ruthless, bloodthirsty pirate. She had rules. So anyone that gives orders that there are their own orders, but they didn't come directly for her, from her. So let's say a captain decides that they want to go raid this town. If they made that decision on their own without consulting her, she beheaded them on the spot. Regardless of what the order was. No one was to steal from any public fund, so they would get all the wealth and stuff and bring it together. You couldn't steal from the public fund or any villages that supplied the pirates with goods. What do you think she did if you did that? Beheaded you on the Beheaded spot. Beheaded you on the spot. Like all it. goods yes. all yes. goods that were taken had to be presented for group inspection. 
It was registered by a purser and then distributed by the fleet leader. The original seizer of the goods received 20% and the rest was put into the public fund. Okay. All actual money was turned over to the squadron, squadron leader who only gave a small amount back to the Caesar. So the rest could be used to purchase supplies for the unsuccessful pirate ships. The punishment for a first time offense of withholding like the booty, basically, was severe whipping of the bat. Large amounts beheaded them on the spot. <laughs> it, she also had rules for female captives. Uh, you release women's. Usually the pirates made their most beautiful captains their concubines or wives. If a pirate took a wife, he had to be faithful to her. The ones deemed unattractive were released and any remained were ransomed. Pirates that uh, performed sexual misdeviousness were put to death. Beheaded on the spot. Beheaded on the spot. If pirates had consensual sex with captives, the pirates was beheaded and the woman he was with had cannonballs attached to her leg and was thrown over the other side of the boat. This is extreme first wave like, yes, queen, we rule the world. Can I just say the women had that worse, man? Like you're gonna kill me yeah. instantly, and they had to drown. You're that, gonna make yeah. me drown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this gave these kind of strict rules were nothing that anybody couldn't follow. But this gave rise to a force that was intrepid in attack and desperate in defense, and literally just destroyed all these naval armies. That is my individual who I think is more badass than most people will ever achieve. What do you guys think about that? I got to say, so most, a lot of people in you know, the modern era say violence is not the answer. Does beheading count as violence? Well, I guess it I'm depends on it who you ask. <laughs> I'm, man, but you know what? She made her rules. And she showed people that there were consequences for not following said rules. Yeah. Yeah, man. Do you, I mean, could you imagine the just, the sure tenacity it takes to say, you know what? I'm the Pirate Queen, and we're going to follow my rules. And guess what? I'm so good at Pirate Queen, we're going to flourish and have an era of pirates that has never been before. I will be the most successful pirate ever. Oh, yeah, I was a hooker once. Isn't that so strange? Because you have to think about it, like, now that we're hearing about it, we're like, whoa, but, like, in the moment, like, in that single moment, she's just like, you know what? (laughs) I am the captain now. I am the captain. Y'all want to see something cool? Watch this. And she probably just drove the boat. Like, I'm the pirate queen. Hey, everybody, it's me. Like, nobody knew, but that is an awesome individual. I feel like I have completely misunderstood the directive yes. of this podcast because <laughs> I was like, I was like looking up people. I'm like, who who do I think is just super badass and cool and just like a good, like like an interesting person? You're just like, hey, the pirate queen. Yeah, and I'm yeah. just like, uh, I was looking up shit about Bruce Lee. <laughs> Bruce Lee's pretty cool, but, yeah, but uh, he's not no pirate queen. Yeah, but <laughs> he, I, he punches and kicks real fast, but he ain't no fucking pirate queen. That is true. He is not the pirate queen. But thinking about people that I'd never heard in hit never heard their name of in history before. I'd never heard her name. And then I started researching her and everything that uh she was about. I'm like, my god, this woman is amazing. So another individual i'm still stuck in on the pirate queen <laughs> yeah i'm like uh, i just I want to talk not, about the pirate queen okay I, hold on okay i'm not prepared and i'm just here to tag along on your guys' stories <laughs> and so i don't have one but i'm <laughs> listening with great intent a purpose okay that... good yeah um i almost want to go into like like how we like having a code having a code of ethics and honor and like repercussions how weird that would be when you're like we are seafaring thieves but also we got rules yeah you can't just go around breaking those rules what a strange thing to implement i don't know maybe it was chaos without law 
Yeah, and you think about it, you gotta have something that's gonna unify these individuals and some ground, some set of ground rules so that it doesn't become just utter chaos. Because that's what it would be if she didn't have that set of rules. So that, and that builds that community as well. They, they have a shared and common purpose and a shared common set of guidelines that drives that purpose. And she just became the leader of that and kind of drove them to the next level. Um, they have, uh, they have a bunch of books about her and, uh, they've even made some, some short stories and stuff like that kind of, uh, needs to be a video game. <clears throat> it does. I you agree. You start out as so-and-so make your way. And as you do things that give you more and more control, you know, you progress further and further in the game and you get to start like creating your own laws you know law and order yeah or they order uh chaos they did put her in a manga um it's no, they did. Did yes, they really they, yeah it's called a uh, oh. sailor v codenamed sailor v he was in a manga and then um they have a a little a film called singing behind the screens and it's a retelling of uh individuals of kind of what happened but I mean, I mean, think about it. That's pretty pretty good life to live. No kidding. If we're gonna go back to this, I want to talk about like so in that video game scenario, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine instead of like the choices and like it's a like a psh, empire pirate empire building scenario. What if you start out as her husband, right? Like the pirate. And then you're you're like, oh, this dude is bad. Eh? Like he's bad. He's out here just doing whatever he wants. Then he dies, and then you have to start playing as the pirate queen. And you're just like, immediately tell like like you want to talk about some strong female characters. I would play as this woman. Oh yeah, she is so, clean. So could you perhaps do like a part one where you play this story as the husband and. You that you it ends with you having this great big empire that you've built throughout and the entire first game. Then the second game starts with how you die and her remembering how she's gotten to this point, which is where she's coming from being pro a prostitute and working her way to where she is now with her husband dead. And then more of the story is how she progresses from there into you know the world she has now. What's weird is like her uh her husband's pirate empire wasn't exactly anything that would be like something major. He was just another one right. of the pirate factions on the seas, but she kind of took control of it. And I mean, we talk about her being in video games, but there's a couple games that you guys might have heard of that her character is what based characters in those games off of. Uh, have you guys heard of a game called Genshin Impact? Yes. Captain of the. No, tell me about it. <laughs> Who is she? Bedo? You guys talk about. Is Captain... she Bedo? Oh she my is God, Bedo. I love Bedo. She's Bedo. That is who she's oh based off of. And then Bedo I don't know. My mom. I don't know if you guys have played a game called RuneScape. Yes. Why do you say that? Like <laughs> these aren't super popular. Like if you heard about this game called RuneScape, Dude, if, you said, if you were talking about some game that's like not popular or good at all, like Dragon Age, then I would be. I would understand. I'm calling the, the cops right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she is actually in the MMO RuneScape. Her character has you do pirate things in RuneScape. Oh, so, I'm taking pirate quests. I'm taking it from the pirate queen herself. Yeah, she's but... there. Is uh, never been a greater pirate queen. Um, I would say just very interesting individual and would really, why is there not, why is this not a triple A movie? How, why is this movie not come out yet? Well, Dude, you can do so much with this video game. Like part yeah. three could be, you're now a new pirate pulling and you have to eventually go up against the pirate queen. But like, if you try to do it too early, she beats the shit out of you and talks shit to you. That's true. And you that's have to like go an probably beheaded on the saying, spot, though, right? Like, <laughs> there's different parts. It's like this is the first <laughs> game. Number two comes out. Number three, then this could be like a whole series of games. Um, Eventually, with it's a whole open world pirate MMO. So this, 
this might be hard to even kind of add on to her legend. So one thing that makes her story so good, and I don't have specifics of this, but I know I could probably find them with time. But she was known for getting out of dangerous situations unscathed. And nobody knows how she did it most of the time. Like, situation where she probably should have died, and she's just fine. I guys, can't wait to see this at, like, 3 a.m. History Channel, where she's like, <laughs> she was actually an alien, alien. with advanced technology to deflect all materials. Yeah. That is the only way she could have escaped. That's actually true. Yeah. You know, anybody who's been popular in power uh, are actually aliens. That's true. That's, uh, yeah, so yeah, I've, I've heard that. Honest gods. Of course. Um, she was in Pirates of the Caribbean as one of the nine pirate lords. I looked up her picture and immediately saw the person from Pirates of the Caribbean, and I was like, yeah, I remember her. I remember her being very angry a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I don't remember those movies very well. Not a yeah, great I don't either. I'll have to watch them again. Uh, I'm not watching them. So, um... What characters would you guys like to hear about? What what characters do you guys out there in the audience know about that maybe we should even look into? Because there are plenty of people that we probably never heard of before that have done things that are just outstanding and amazing. But this has been Nerd Lore. I'm Shiny Shoes. I'm Crash Starling. I'm Scandal, baby. Thank you guys for coming by. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We are on most major podcast platforms now, so you can find us wherever you podcast. Bye now.